Cancer, welcome to your March 2018 love reading. It's Raina here. Let me just shuffle the cards really quickly. Okay, um, because this is not a card I associate with endings, I'm going to look at what's at the bottom of the deck. Okay, I like this one a lot better, but um, that'll be a clarification card. The Nine of Swords is kind of like a state of mind. Not a real nice state of mind either, but it's not the kind of um, card that I associate with wrapping up a reading. Okay. So, let's look at the heart of the matter. We have a lot of swords in this card, in this uh, spread. Uh, the King of Swords. Now, the swords relate to air signs. The sign, the air sign that I believe, if I were to tally it up, that the average cancer person ends up with is a, is a Libra. The other air, maybe a Gemini that's a sign adjacent to yours, and the other one is Aquarius. The thing about relationships between air signs and water signs is that, or let's just talk about your sign, uh, Cancer, is that a Cancer person, um, it's very easy for you to jump to the conclusion that the air sign individual doesn't care enough and this may be the case you may be right in some instances or you are just so different from that type of person that you don't realize that there are different ways to show that you care and so if it's not in the way that you're used to or that you are acclimated, yeah, towards, then you may assume it's inferior, wrong, yeah, inadequate, what have you. And so, this can be an older air sign, um, or this person may have those that analytical mind, that an air sign person does. Maybe they have air in their charts, whatever. But the point is, is that they're coming from a mental point of view more than a touchy-feely one. And this person may be out of touch with their feelings. That may be exactly what's going on. Um, the other possibility is that this is how your father was. Because kings can be fathers. And it's possible that you're projecting this onto every man that you, you know, get involved with and expecting them to be different than what your father was. And maybe perhaps you are attracted to detached men who can't tell you that they love you because that feels familiar. Now, in the past position, we have a, a card that connects with Someone who is trapped by their own limiting, self-limiting beliefs. And one thing I wanted to say, swords also represent thought. So thoughts can work on our behalf or against us. We can think positive thoughts that empower us or negative ones that keep us in chains or or, you know, bound up and make us feel like we can't move, like we're oppressed. But it's really something we're doing to ourselves. And one method of kind of loosening those 
chains or those, uh, or, you know, being bound like that is self-inquiry. And self-inquiry is a technique, you know, I don't know who invented it, but uh, they use it in spiritual practice in order to get to the bottom of our thoughts. Because sometimes we just think thoughts and assume that they are facts when they're not. They're conditioned beliefs. And um, this can involve how we can prove that somebody else loves us. If you are with someone and you say, keep saying to yourself, he doesn't really love me, then you say to yourself, is that true? And that, that one of the people who have uh, popularized, who has popularized this, is uh, Byron Katie. And she has something called The Work, which well, are four questions uh, that you ask yourself. But one of them is, and I think it's the first one, is, is it true? And... Actually, that's you don't. I don't think you need all four because you can't prove anything that you think. Not really, because there's just too many possible outcomes. Just because somebody doesn't show affection the way that you would like them to doesn't mean that they don't care. However, it is possible that that person isn't right for you. And the aid of swords, the problem with that person is that they can't seem to make any kind of decision because they're so caught up in their own uh, conf conflicting beliefs that they're not even able to free themselves completely from the situation. But... Um, you know, the other possibility, too, is forget about uh, the King of Swords being another person. Maybe this is something that you have adopted within yourself. It's possible that you were hung up on someone and your emotional nature, being a Cancer, kept you trapped in a, in a, in a, a bad relationship until you finally decided that you just had to get out of it and and not allow your emotions to run the show anymore and that's the king of swords and now you're in a new phase where you're not looking back you're looking you're you're not even looking ahead you're just kind of like a nomad so you're just going wherever you feel guided to in the moment which is very atypical for a cancer individual Usually cancers are the ones with the uh, the roadmaps, extra jug of water, and, uh, you know, they're very well prepared, packing everything that they can think of in case of an emergency. You know, that's, you usually are thinking about those things, but there's something inside of you. Now, you did have the full moon in your sign at the beginning of the year and maybe that kicked off this part of you that said okay that's the end of that cycle of who I am and now I'm going into a new phase of my life and you are going to have a solar eclipse this summer cancer 20 degrees July 12 mark that date on your calendar So, the higher message, the spiritual message, whatever you want to call it, is a wheel of fortune. And that's like um, being in alignment. So, you know, even timing-wise. Oh, you know what's interesting? This card connects with Jupiter, and Jupiter is in Scorpio. Uh, guess what house Scorpio is for Cancer? It is your fifth house of romance. Jupiter in that house can indicate that you have more opportunities to fall in love um, during the time 
that uh, Jupiter resides in this fifth house, which is until the second week in November of this year. So if you have been feeling uh, that your options were limited, now maybe you feel more that there's more abundance, there's more possibilities, and you're like um, a babe in the woods, you know, everything is before you. What crosses you is represented by the sun card. So um, this, this is interesting because the sun rules the fifth house, where I'm talking about this transit of Jupiter. Um, as a, this is actually, um, even if I read it as reverse card, because of how positive the sun is, I mean, it represents love, it represents prosperity, healing, children. It just may mean that these things will come in their own time. Perhaps the timing needs to be right. Um, it, it's interesting, during most of the month of March, the sun is in another water sign, this time um, Pisces. And that is your ninth house of... It's the God house. It's the um, the house of the higher mind, university level uh, learning and teaching and foreign travel. So it's the house that Jupiter rules. So it's possible that um, the influence in March is more of a philosophical nature and perhaps as time goes on, you will um, be able to click with what is happening. You know, you may be at that early stage where you're still exploring things. And if you've gotten out of a long-term relationship, um, that definitely would mean that you would need that time to kind of decompress, so to speak. So... The sun card may be meaning that there's love coming up for you, but it's the it's in the future and not necessarily this month. So don't just assume that oh gosh, you know it's not going to happen. No, the this is the spiritual message. So maybe it's saying hang in there, you know. Uh, the advice or what's coming in is represented by the seven of swords. This can be a card of going it alone. Um, sometimes this card indicates physical theft or deception, like, like cheating. Um, and, but in this context, I think it's more about you taking that time for yourself and being more independent, uh, just like with the fool, you know, almost like a connection to the fool card where you are exploring yourself your life as an individual instead of as part of a couple, perhaps. And this is where we get, okay, this is, um, the, the card I got as the outcome is the Nine of Swords, which connects to anxiety. Now, um, I could have left it like this, and it wouldn't have been that big of a deal, because it only stands to reason that especially if you were in a long-term relationship and there's a change. That is, it, it's normal for people to feel a sense of apprehension just due to change. And yet, there's also the fact that um, in the, um, one of the interpretations that I, I had read was that the person is actually exaggerating this anxiety, that it's not really as bad as they say it is, but they, it's like overblown for some reason. And again, with the Eight of Swords, the person is acting like they can't move, that they're just kind of like a prisoner. And yet, it's um, self-imposed, a self-imposed prison. And so it's like um, 
old habits die hard, right? Even if you are having some great advances in your life, you may still have a little residue of the old energy kind of lingering. So I did pick an additional card, and I got a very positive card, and something that the average cancer person is down with, and it's the four of wands, it's the card of the happy home, happy marriage. The number four, uh, if you are familiar with the houses in astrology, then you should know that this is Cancer's house, the fourth house of home and family in astrology connects is ruled by cancer that house and um, the number four itself stands for structure so that's what this card represents is that um, is what you're I think a lot of cancer people their ultimate goal is to have the kind of household where they go home and there's it's like a, a refuge right where you it's like your um, nest you can go home and it's it's a buffer from the world and if you have someone there who is a loving partner like this person potential um, then all the better and um, that's what you're looking for so with that um, king of swords at the center you may have been with someone who made you feel lonelier even though you were in the house with that person and it may have made the house seem cold I mean um, the wands are fire is fire energy and fire is warmth fire is um, affection okay um, the fire signs are affectionate so maybe this person will be a Leo, because uh, that's the sign that the sun rules. Um, that's always a possibility. However, whatever it's, is going on, the point is that you are, this is exactly what you're looking for. And uh, that was the card at the bottom of the deck. So um, that is a very auspicious way to end the reading. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this, Cancer. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have a great March. Bye.